Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am Richard Ross, your instructor. In today's lesson, I'm going to show you how to build a simple time clock to clock employees in and out. Today's question comes from Austin from Portland, Oregon, a silver member. Austin says, I want to create a simple time clock form so my users can clock in and out for the day, clock out for lunch breaks, and so on. I'd like to use buttons for clocking in and out because I don't want them to be able to edit their times manually. Also, I don't want them to be able to go back to previous days and change their info. How can I do this? Well, Austin, there are some form control properties you can use, such as locked or enabled, to lock those fields. And you can use one line of VB code to set that value with a button. I'll show you how in a second. I'll also show you how to use the data entry property of the form so it opens up to a blank new record and they can't go back through and edit the previous ones. So let's begin by creating an employee table to store our employee information and we'll just keep it simple. We have an employee ID, that'll be our auto number and then we'll put in first name. And of course you'd have all kinds of other information in here about your employees, their address, their phone number, all that stuff. But for training purposes, we don't need to go into all that. So I'm going to save this as my employee, employee T. All right, that's my employee table. Primary key will be our auto number. And I'll just put a few simple records in here. So we've got me, we've got Sue, we got James, and we got Kirk. Okay, save that, close it up. Now we're going to build a time clock table to store their actual clock in and clock out times. So create table design. We're going to have a time clock ID. That's our auto number. Yes, every table should have an auto number. Then we'll have the employee ID, which is a number of type long integer that's related to the employee table. That's our foreign key. If you're not sure about what that means, go watch my relationships video. I'll put a link in the description below. Go watch that now and then come back to this one if you've never related two tables together before. Now we're going to track their time in and their time out. So time in, and that'll be a date, and then their time out. Do we need to store any other calculations in here, like the minutes or hours worked? No, we don't have to, because we can calculate that in a query. So there's no need to store that in the table. The only exception would be if you've got lots and lots of employees and tens of thousands of clock in, clock outs, and you want to make reporting and searching and stuff faster, yes, then you could calculate it and store that value. But for most instances, you don't need to store it. You'll calculate that data in a query on the fly when you generate your reports. Let's save this as my time clock T for table. All right. And if you're not sure about my naming conventions, I use T for tables. All right, F for forms, Q for queries, and I cover that in my Access Beginner 1 free class. That's on my YouTube channel and on my website. Now let's create the time clock form. Create form design. We don't need it to be this big, so let's make it a little bit smaller. Bring those edges in. Something like that'll do. I'm going to give it a splash of color. Let's make it, let's go with yellow for our time clock. We're going to bind this to our time clock table by setting the record source property. Then we're going to add some fields here. So go to design, add existing fields. I'm going to bring in the, we, we don't need the time clock ID. We don't need to see the auto number on this form. It's kind of irrelevant. All right. The employee ID, we're going to make a combo box to pick the employee. So we're not going to bring that in just yet, but I am going to bring in time in and time out. So let's bring those over here and drop them on the form. All right. Now you can close the field list. All right. Arrange these however you want them. I'm going to slide these like this, make the labels look a little more pretty, like so, time in, time out, just like that. Maybe make these black so they're easier to see. I cover all this basic formatting in my Access Beginner Level 1 class, by the way. If it seems like I'm glazing past stuff. All right, let's save this so far as my time clock F. Let's take a peek at what we got. I'm going to close it and reopen it. All right, looks good so far. Let's make a combo box for the employee. 
And again, if you've never made a relational combo box where you look up the values from a different table, then again, I've got a free video for that. Look down below for the link for the relational combo box. A lot of my lessons build on knowledge from other lessons. I'm not trying to push it somewhere else. I want to make sure you understand it before we continue. So if you don't know what a relational combo box is, go watch that free video and then come back to this one. All right, so find combo boxes up top here. We're going to make a combo box to pick the employee and save it in the time clock table. All right, so I want the combo box to get the values from another table or query. What are we looking up the values from? The employee table. Next, bring over both fields because we're storing the employee ID, but we're displaying the first name. That's the, the value of a combo box. How do you want to sort it? First name is fine. Next, that's what it's going to look like. Next, store that value in the employee ID field in my time clock table. So I'm, I'm picking a, a person's name, I'm picking Rick, and that will store employee ID 1 in the time clock table. That's how relationships work. And what you want the label to be, the label can be employee. And then finish. And then we'll slide this guy right above the other ones so it looks nice and pretty. Make that black also. And let's see, that's a little bit too wide. So let's go like that. And we'll slide these ones over just a little bit, like so. Like everything to line up nice on top of each other. Okay, looks good. Okay, let's save it, close it, open it up. All right, I'm on a new record, one of one. Pick an employee, pick Rick. Time in. Now you can put a date in here just by typing, or you can use the keys on the keyboard, the shortcut keys, control semicolon, puts the date in there, and then hit the space bar, and then control shift semicolon, which is basically control colon, gives you the time. But we don't want our end users being able to type those things in or edit them. All right, so I'm going to hit escape a few times here. Hit escape. That'll go back to a blank record. I want to make little buttons over here that put the time in both of those fields. I'm going to lock these. So let's go to design mode. Another thing I want to do is turn this little guy off here because we don't want, this is the little, the date time picker. We don't want to see that either. So let's go in here, design view. All right, let's open up the properties for both of these. And I'm going to turn show date picker off to never. Let's find the locked property. Let's see, where's locked? Right down here. Turn locked to yes. Now for that, I'm going to make these guys just a little bit gray. That kind of signifies to the user, hey, you can't type something in there. Those are locked. That's a bit too gray. Let's go a little bit less gray. That's good right there. All right, now here come our buttons to clock in and clock out with. Are you ready for a little tiny bit of programming? All right, here we go. Go to the control box and find the button tool. Technically, it's called a command button. Click on that. Drop it right down here. Now the wizard starts up. We're going to cancel the wizard because what we want to do is it included in the wizard. All right, now I'm going to drag this over here. First, let's go over to the properties here. Let's give this button a good name. Right now it's called Command 5. We're going to call this Clock in BTN, Clock in Button. And the caption is going to be Clock in, just like that. That's the caption that appears on the button. All right, Alex will be proud of me. I actually named my buttons. I didn't used to do that. <laughs> All right. Right click build event now you might get a little window up that says what kind of builder do you want pick the code builder i have it turned off on my system that'll bring you to the visual basic for applications the vba window now right in here we need one line of code it's just simply going to be time in equals now and then open close parentheses that's it one line of code that's setting the value of the time in field equal to right now even though this field is locked, we can still set the value in VB code. It just locks it from the user being able to type values in. So let's come back over here, save this, close it, open this up, and hit the clock in button. Boom. There you go. It puts the date and time to the minute right in there, to the second, actually. And if I click in here and try to change it, I can't. Okay. Let's do another one. So the same thing for clock out. I'm just going to copy this button. Watch this. Copy, paste. That's all I got to do. Change this to clock out and change the name right up here to clock out BTN, clock out button. Right click, build event, time out equals now. That's all. Save it. 
All right, let's close it and reopen it. Okay, there's my first record. Clock out. Boom. That's it. And then, of course, you got to pick a name. Close it. And now open up your time clock table, and there's the record. Employee 4. Let's widen these out a little bit so you can see all the data. There it is. All right. Time for the next record. Open it up. Now, you might not want to have the user have to go to a blank new record each time. So let's open this up in data entry mode. Data entry mode. So come over here. Find the properties for the form, which is double click right here where this little, where the ruler bars meet, that little square there. Go to the data tab and find data entry. Change that to yes. All right, close it. Now when they open it up, it goes to a blank record. They cannot go back through the other records. This is a plus. Okay? You don't want them going back through and going to last Tuesday and being, yeah, let me change this a little bit so it doesn't show I clocked out this late or whatever. Okay? This way they're forced to go to a blank new record. If they mess up, they're going to have to go to their manager. The manager, if you have your database properly secured, can go directly into the table and make changes. I cover how to lock your database down in my security seminar. I'll put a link down below. All right, you can prevent the users from seeing any of this stuff and being able to go into your code, being able to go into your tables. Okay, it involves some programming, of course, but you can properly lock down your database so the users can't play with the data in the tables. But now when the users open up the time clock, they can clock in, right? James, clock in. Now they're working, right? They're going to have to leave this form open while they're working. That's a good thing. I think that's a good thing. I like leaving the time clock window open or at least minimize it, right? What you might also want to do is throw a refresh in your button. See how this is the little pencil there? That indicates this record is still dirty. It hasn't been saved to the table yet. Okay, let's go back into our code real quick. Right click on any of these buttons, go to build event. And after each one of these, I want you to put in me.refresh. All right, me.refresh. That simply tells the form, save the data to the table underneath, but keep it open. Don't go anywhere. All right, this ensures, save changes, yes. This ensures that when you add a record, all right, Kirk, and then I hit clock in, all right, it saved the data. See how now we're back to the, the little arrow there? It saved that data to the table. And in case something happens where the, comp the user's computer shuts down or whatever, let's say there's an, a, a, a problem with the machine and everything shuts down. All right, at least this way, if Kirk comes back in now, right, Kirk can at least clock out properly. And then the, you know, he goes to his manager and says, yeah, my computer locked up. So the manager can at least go into the time clock table and then, okay, this is two records here separated. We can then just adjust this and then close that. Or so you can see, you can see now the manager can now see in the table that, wait a minute, you clocked in this day. Where's your clock out time? What'd you do? All right. So there's, there's all kinds of things you can do. But basically, as far as your end user is concerned, you put a button on your main menu that opens up the time clock. And then you tell them to clock in. Leave that form open while you do your work. And then when you're done for the day or you go on break, clock out. That's the simplest time clock. Yeah, there's lots more you can do with this. And I will cover some more in the extended cut for the members. But this is a basic functioning time clock. And that's really all you need. Now, if you want to learn more about how to calculate the hours worked that each employee worked to create like a timesheet, I do have another video. It's calculate total time spent on a job. The same thing works for employee time clocks as well. You got a time in, a time out, and I'll show you how to calculate the total minutes they worked. And then you can, from there you can figure out the hours, total hours, minutes left, display time, all that stuff. That's a free video. It's on my website, on my YouTube channel. I also cover making a more fully functional work log in my Access Expert 11 class. And I'll put links to both of these videos in the description below. Want to learn more about building a time clock? Well, on the 20 minute extended cut, I show you lots more with this time clock database. We'll build a main menu and I'll create a simple login with a password. So when they pick their name from the combo box list, before they can do anything, they have to enter a password. I'll show you a real simple way for putting in a password. This way, each user has to log on as themselves. Then we'll open up the time clock form for just that user. Notice how it's locked on the time clock form now also. As long as the user is logged in, it picks it up off of the main menu form. Then we'll set it up so they can clock in and then close the time clock form if they want to. The next time they click the time clock button, it will open up the last record wherever they were clocked in but not clocked out yet. 
will have the clock in button locked, as you can see it there in the picture. And then when they hit the clock out button, it will close the time clock form. So all that's covered in the extended cut video for members only. How do you become a member? Click on the join button below the video. Silver members and up will get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, live video and chat sessions, and other perks. After you click the join button, you'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks. But don't worry, these tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more, and they'll always be free. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and feel free to share it wherever you think it might help people who are interested in access. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and click on the bell icon to select all to be notified every time I post a new video. YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted. So if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link below to join my mailing list. Click on the Show More link below the video to find additional resources and links. You'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access. It's over three hours long, and you can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below you can click on. And if you like level one, level two is just one dollar, and that is free for all members of my YouTube channel at any level. Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and you can send me your question there. If you have a specific problem you need help with, or you'd like to discuss having a database built for your needs, I do offer one-on-one -on -one consulting. Be sure to follow my blog and find me on Facebook, Twitter, and of course, YouTube. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed this video and you learned something today. I'll see you again soon.